Welcome to Chop Talk. I'm Chris Love. I'm Jane Mackey. I'm not saying anything. Chop Talk is presented by U.S. Sailing with support from Zim Sailing. Aside from sponsoring this fine show, U.S. Sailing also offers a great college sailing membership. If you don't have one yet, head on over to racing.ussailing.org slash college to get signed up now. Kicking it off with Stud of the Week. We nominated three earlier in the week, and here's your pick. And now for this week's feature. In the first episode of our season, you may remember we talked about which teams were poised to do well this season based on their incoming freshmen, their outgoing senior class, and the early regatta results from the first two weeks of the season. So this week, what we're going to do is check back in and see where we stand. First off, you may remember uh, Zeke and I had a little disagreement about who we thought the deepest team was. There was Yale or Stanford. And I don't think it'll come as a surprise to anybody that I was right and Chris was wrong, as per the usual. Yale, I think, has won like every single regatta. Graham Landy is crushing everybody in A Division on a regular basis. Seger Blom is holding it down in B Division all the time. And their freshmen are certainly the best uh, freshmen in college sailing, just like I said a few months ago now. So more of the same on that front. Yes, you are correct. And you know, whenever I do a show like this where we try to look at results from a whole season, you know, I usually start by seeing who's won regattas and kind of go from there. But Yale is making it so hard this season. They've won just about everything they've entered and, and account for almost half of the total interconference wins so far this season. But that's not to say that, uh, that there are not other very talented teams in college sailing. So let's just go through of them. You guys tell me, hot or not? We'll start with Stanford. Not hot. Stanford's got good players, but we really haven't seen anything in results to tell us anything consistently. Um, until we start seeing some consistent results, they're not hot. Gotta agree with you, Jane. They are indeed not hot. You guys are wrong. They're saving it. They're saving it up. These guys are still hot. I don't care what you say. All right, next on the list here, College of Charleston. Well, I think Zeke summed it up pretty well when he called them the biggest loser. If Zeke is calling his own college sailing team the biggest loser, then I'm going to have to go ahead and say that they are not hot. That I cannot agree with you on, Jane. The Cougars are as hot as ever. They just got second at Navy Fall. Jake Reynolds has been putting the team on his back, crushing it in the A Division. He's had one of the top uh, A performances of the fall, sailing with multiple different crews. Uh, and their B division has held it down between Ryan Davidson and Nick Johnson. I'd say they're performing a lot better than a lot of people would have thought that they might have. They've got four players at single handeds and they're qualified for sloops. So hot. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Zeke. A little bit of a testament to the, uh, the power, the strength of the coaching staff and the university support at College of Charleston. They're good even without that uh, freshman class we talked about in the opening episode. All right, uh, Harvard. Harvard underperforming, also not hot. Not hot. The twins are leaving something to be desired, and their women's team is forgettable at best. Yeah, they just don't have the, the consistency that some of the other guys have. I agree, not hot. All right, Dartmouth. Got to be the second best team in Nisa at the moment. These guys are hot. I just love the way you say hot, Jane. It really gets me going. Um, Totally agree. Dartmouth, uh, we, we expected them to be really good, um, and they are definitely performing well. They're definitely the second best team in NISA. Deirdre Lambert is a stud for the women's and in the co-ed, and Matt Weffer is one of the top A division guys as well. So agree with Jane. They're hot. Yeah, I feel pretty good about what we said in the opening episode. Let's see what they can do in the postseason. Next up, Con College. These guys have been getting some pretty good scores. I would say that they're hot. I gotta agree with you again, darling. I think there's a predisposition in college sailing that con kind of sucks, but they don't. They decidedly do not. They're very good. They've had a solid season. They just got fourth at the shell. They're legit. Tufts. Well, these guys have been up and down, but if both of their divisions show up on a weekend, they're good. Hot. Yeah, I think it just depends on the weekend. One weekend they're hot, one weekend they're very, very not hot. They're 
totally inconsistent in both divisions, but if they can get there at the same time, they're very good. Um, women's team, though, uh, do they have one? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I can call these guys hot. Um, maybe they'll perform in the postseason. I'll change my mind. But for now, I'm going to say not. Georgetown. Georgetown is hot. They've won the Navy fall. They've won the war. They're definitely the best team in Mesa. They are uh, going to singles, and they're going to be very good at sloops with Nevin Snow at the helm. Uh, their women's team is a little bit subpar, though, but definitely a hot team. Well, Georgetown is always hot. They're not deep, but what else is new? Still hot. Agreed. Hot, but a rebuilding team for the women's team. Uh, how about their rival, St. Mary's? Right. Well, they definitely can't touch the Hoyas in Mesa. Um, they're probably, I'm going to say not hot based on how uh, good a review we gave them at the beginning. They've had some really good results. They were third at Navy, um, but their women's team is notably bad. Can't touch this. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> That's all I can think about. I think we're all in agreement then. How about ODU? Decidedly not hot. I was expecting a big year out of Esteban, uh, but he's kind of been all over the place. They haven't had consistency in their divisions, and they've had a pretty rough go of it this fall. Not hot. Esteban did win B at the war, um, but still inconsistent performances across the board. I'm going to go with not hot. I have to agree with you guys, not hot for now, but could he be heating up? Last spring, this team didn't do a whole lot, and then they just were tremendous at semifinals. Maybe it'll be the same this season. We're going to have to wait and see. Next on the list is Boston College. Boston College, I'm going to say, is hot. They're kind of an interesting team this year. They've played around a little bit with who sails what divisions, had some really good results, some less than stellar results. They also threw Erica Reinecke into A division where she won, beating the likes of Ian Barrows. So I think they've got a little, Coach Greg has some figuring out to do who he's going to play where. But I think by the end of the season, uh, with Raul and Erica and Will Bailey, they could be very hot. Sounds like every other season, every other year with BC, it's always a bit um, up and down, great players. And at the end, they often win. So I'm going to go with hot. Yep, definitely hot again. Brown. Uh, they've got a great women's squad, kind of led by Sky Adams. Um, their co-ed team is a little bit just right in the mix with everybody else. I'm going to say not hot. I was expecting them to be a little bit better this season. They're kind of around 8-ish every time. Not hot enough for me. Yep, 8-ish is not hot. I don't know. I kind of like their consistent results. You're not seeing them score 17th at regattas. I'm going to say warm, bridging on hot. How about Roger Williams? Yeah, warm, bridging on hot, I get the feeling, is what they say about you a lot of the time, huh, Chris? <laughs> Roger Williams, not particularly deep. Uh, third at St. Mary's, second at the Captain Hurst, totally forgettable women's team. I, they're not hot. They're not hot. Yeah, you know, as you guys predicted at the beginning of the season, they lost a College Sailor of the Year nominee last year and have not filled those shoes, and they're definitely not really that hot. Tepid. Lukewarm. I guess not hot. All right, MIT. Lukewarm at best. MIT is always cool, but they're pretty mediocre this year, so not hot. Ah, you guys are too hard on them. College sailing is tough, and they're consistent. They're as consistent as Brown. But uh, I do agree. They're, they're, not, they're not beating the socks off of uh, anyone else on this list. So, fine. Not hot. I can't believe you just said that college sailing is tough. <laughs> All right. Last on our list, although I'm sure we could talk about others who are not hot. Uh, how about Navy? <laughs> Obviously a killer, hot women's team behind Mary and Marissa Lehan. Um, their co-ed team has been pretty consistent, like top sevens all the time. Better than I thought they were going to be. Navy's hot. Well, Chris, as you mentioned, college sailing is tough, and this team shows that they are hot. They're killing it with the women's. Definitely hot. Yes, Navy is hot, no question. Well, we're going to have to check in again after the postseason and see if our analysis was correct. Zim Sailing manufactures the most durable 420s and FJs at a great price for college sailing. 
They include all the features college sailing demands to include recessed gaskets, heavy-duty rub rail, filled rails, bow bumpers, gel-coated bow numbers, and the Zim Platinum sails with custom graphics. If your team wants to save money on its next fleet, visit ZimSailing.com to find more details. Thanks for all your awesome Halloween photo submissions. Some really cool stuff here. Check them out. Well, this week there aren't many college sailing regattas going on unless you're a laser goon. So we want to see what do college sailors do with a weekend off. Maybe hit the beach if you're in the south. Maybe ply your driveway if you're in the north. Whatever it is, take some pictures. Make sure that they're PG-13. On to the main event this weekend, we have the single-handed champs, very exciting. It's going to be held, um, hosted by Brown and Salve Regina at Sail Newport. Let's turn the spotlight first onto the girls. Let's look at the lineup. Well, these are a lot of the big names in women's college sailing, but you know, surprisingly, there's only a few names that really stand out as rock star laser radial sailors. Not everybody on this list has any kind of serious laser resume. Yeah, well, we can look at as many names as we want, but there's only one name on the list that really matters, and that's who's going to be on top of the podium. And I'd be, I think the world would be shocked if it's anybody but Miss Erica Reinecke, who won 15 of 18 races or something last year. Um, it would be the upset of the century if Erica does not win this regatta. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure indeed. I think you look at uh, Mary Hall, Ariel DeLisser, Marissa Lehan, Sky Adams, these are, these are the other names that are going to be second or competing for second behind Erica Reinecke. Um, I don't think that a whole lot has changed in a year. Maybe Erica's not quite, um, quite as practiced in the laser, but how could it possibly matter when you look at talent like that? Yeah, I mean, oftentimes I've had experience with this. It depends on the conditions at the regatta when it comes down to lasers, you know, if if it's someone that spent a lot more time in the boats, um, as oftentimes also as the sailors get older, um, they get worse at laser sailing and better at double-handed sailing, so that can also be a challenge. But uh, looking at this regatta, I really don't see um, how Erica could sort of miss out on that top spot. So I think we'll leave that at that for the women's, and let's turn over to the men's. Yeah, this is a stacked lineup. I did this regatta a few times in college, and I can't remember seeing one as deep with like six or seven guys who could potentially win this regatta. This is a really tough one. Um, I think conditions will um, affect the outcome of this. I think if it's breeze on, you got to look at a guy like John Wallace from St. Mary's, who's faster than everybody else when it's windy. If it's light, you've got guys like Nick Valente from SUNY who could smoke a lot of these guys. Um, I think if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to go with Greg Martinez from Georgetown, who's been, I think, one of the more active laser sailors outside of college sailing recently, and he looks pretty good. Come on, Zeke. What about, going back to the first episode, the freshman recruits we talked about? Wonky Perdomo out of Puerto Rico, just amazing on the international scene, and a couple over at Yale, Ian Barrows and Mitchell Kiss. I mean, these guys were born for this kind of thing. Um, I think they're the names that you're going to be seeing fighting it for the top three. Uh, I think Craig Martinez is probably going to pick off maybe one of them. So you just mentioned Juan. He came first at the ISAF Youth Worlds and Laser Radials in 2013. That speaks really loud in, um, in my books. I know that also Mitchell Kiss came fourth in the same regatta in 2012. So I think if we were looking at these guys, that would sort of be how they'd rank in my books. I know also that Ian Barrows has a lot of great experience and great results sailing bites, but now has moved more into the double-handed sailing in the past couple years. So as much as I'd like to take a gamble on one of the Yale sailors, I do think that Juan um, is probably going to come out on top. Let's also not forget about a guy who was second at this regatta a few years ago when he was a freshman, and that's Chris Stocky from USF. He's really quick in all conditions, really good at sailing the boat. He's been a little bit off the pace recently, but he could certainly be up in, in the mix as well. And I think just most importantly, this is going to be a regatta won by consistency um, with a pretty high average. I think any of the guys that we named could win this thing. 
In years past, we've seen people like Juan Magley or Cam Coleman win this regatta by like 25 or 30 points. Don't think that's going to be the case this year. I think there's going to be a lot of guys in the hunt. They come down to the last race. should be exciting. Well, that's going to do it for us here at the Chalk Talk. See you next week. The Chalk Talk. No, not going to work. Chalk Talk. <laughs> Just Chalk Talk. No the. Bye-bye.